speak to me from heaven and give my spirit the grace to understand in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord, speak to me from heaven and give my spirit the power and the grace to receive the word and be blessed by it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. This morning, I'll be looking briefly at what I call repositioning for overflowing blessings. What do I call it? Because in the agenda of God, this year has been declared as our year of overflowing blessings. And I pray we will experience and enjoy overflowing blessings. But you know, just as God has programmed a lot of blessings into this year, the devil is also looking for a way of robbing the children of God. And one of his usual methods is to make us to believe that what is going to be is going to be. Amen? He makes us to believe that it does not matter what you do, how you do it, God knows those who will make it. It's nothing but the lie of the enemy. Amen? And it's one of the lies that the devil is using to rob us of our blessings every year. And as children of God, we need to sit down and look at our lives. Do we need to make amends in any area? They say ignorance is a disease and only knowledge can cure it. Amen? God wants us to take charge of this year so that we can be swimming in his blessings and he wants us to be connected to his blessings. They are there. He doesn't need to be looking for it. They are already there. But only those who are connected will enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Somebody said the simple definition of insanity is to be doing the same thing the same way and be expecting a different result. It's nothing but insanity. So, at personal level, at family level, at church levels, we need to reposition ourselves. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 1. The Lord told the children of Israel, this is the account of Moses, when he was talking to the children of Israel in the last days of his journey on earth. Deuteronomy 1, 6 to 8 says, The Lord our God spake unto us in Oreb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this month. Turn you, I'm reading Deuteronomy 1, 6 to 8. Turn you, verse 7, and take your journey, and go to the month of the Amorites, and unto all the places nigh they are unto. In the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, verse 8, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. They tarried there for long. And the Lord, the promises were there. God told them, I've given you the land. Just go there and possess it. But they were staying on the same spot. They were not ready to reposition themselves. God had to join them and say, ah, what are you still doing? The land is before you. Take your journey from where you are. Possess the land. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the same thing, God told Abraham, I will make of you a great nation. Take your luggages. Move from your father's house. Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 4. And he told them, and the Bible says in verse 4, So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. He departed as the Lord has spoken. 
he couldn't make him a great nation in his father's house. They don't do well in his father's house. His father was an idol worshiper. And God knew that as long as he remained there, he went up worshiping idol. And the father said, you need to take your journey. Reposition yourself so that I can make of you a great nation. Until you are repositioned from where you are to where God wants you to be, there cannot be overflowing blessings. Your place of assignment is your place of fulfillment. Where God has not assigned you, it doesn't matter how much you labor there, he cannot bless what he has not proposed. And that is why you must find your location, spiritually, physically, mentally, you need to reposition yourself if you must enjoy overflowing blessings. I, as a pastor, I need to reposition myself. What is God telling me this year? What is his agenda for me as a pastor this year? I need to find out. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if I sleep in church, I will still remain on the same spot. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. In Isaiah 41, Isaiah 41, verses 17 and 18. Isaiah 41, 17 and 18. Say, when the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for test, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. But what happened? The need must seek water. It doesn't matter. Let the need be crying. I'm thirsty. It doesn't matter. Let the need be saying, why have you positioned me here? Where am I? Why is there no water here? Until they take that step of faith and seek water, God will not open rivers in high places. Are you following me? You cannot remain on the same spot and expect the wind of change to come and take you. You cannot be doing the same thing the same way. In your Bible study, in your prayer life, you need to reposition yourself. The poor and the needy must seek water. They may be thirsty. They may cry. Until they take the step of faith and seek water, God is not going to open rivers for them. You need to seek water this year. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And he said he will now turn dry lands into springs of water. All these things can happen when the needy seeks water. Every success story has an element of repositioning. Every success story has what? An element of what? Repositioning. Praise the Lord. You may have to reposition yourself from fear to faith, discouragement to courage, idleness to meaningful engagement. You may have to reposition yourself from the mindset of I can't to I can. I used to work for an outsourcing company many years ago. The slogan is they call it can do mindset. Amen. And they have severity of problems. Self one is the toughest. And when you receive self one, when you are on call, the first thing you must tell yourself is that it is possible to be resolved. And then you start looking for solution. It's always, in fact, there is always that time they always have annual celebration of can do mindset. We gather together, we eat together, we celebrate that year that. With the mindset of can do, we have achieved this much. Praise the Lord. So, this year, you need to reposition yourself from it is not possible. That it is not only possible, but easy. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. What do you do? How do you reposition yourself? Number one, reposition yourself from the past. From where? Apostle Paul say, I can't know myself not to have attained. But there's one thing I do. I forget what is behind. I press on.
towards what is ahead. Amen. Praise the Lord. The past is your history. Don't allow it to define you. You are not a failure until you have given up. Amen. I told you the story of that man from my village. He was writing his uh, exam to become a medical doctor. He wrote three times. He said he would not write again. He wanted to go back to nursing school. Then one of his brother's friend came to the house and said, Ah, how far? How was your size? Ah, oh God, I've forgotten about that. You know, it's not possible for me. I'll just go back to, you know, read nursing. And the man said, Ah, why? Don't do that. Don't give up. He said, ah, I'll spend a lot. The man said, oh, Don't worry. I will pay. Go and write the exam. I will pay. The man paid and he passed the exam. He became a medical doctor. In fact, he, he retired recently. Amen. Praise the Lord. Forget about your past failure. You have learned the lessons of your past failure. Am I right? Let the lessons push you to the next level. They asked one man, they said, how many times did you fail before you? He said, I didn't fail. I think he, they said, I can't remember the story very well. I think the one who invented electricity. He failed 999 times. Now, hooray, 99 times. And they asked him, how many times did you fail? He said, no, I didn't fail. I only learned 999 ways of not doing it. You understand what I mean? He said, I learned that there are 999 ways that if I continue to do it that way, I cannot get this thing. That is the mindset. Are you with me? No man is a failure until he has given up. Don't give up on your dreams. Praise the Lord. I was listening to T.D. Jesuit this week. He said that, don't allow your feelings to destroy your dreams. Amen? Don't allow what? Your feelings. To destroy what? Your dreams. I feel tired. I feel frustrated. I feel I'm not making it. I feel this is not the way God has created me. I think God didn't mean me, didn't mean me to do this thing and all that. Those are your feelings. I read it in another, another book. It said that don't listen to your voice. Speak to your life. Amen? You always say, I'm tired. Your body will become tired. Reposition yourself from your past. That's number one. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Number two, reposition yourself from the mindset of failure. Believe that you will finish well. Amen? It doesn't matter what is happening right now. That is not the end of your story. Believe that you will finish well. Somebody says, we will learn lesson in the period of ease and comfort. Do you believe that? You get tougher, the tougher the situation you have gone through. That is why when you see some situations, you will, you will smile. Because you have gone through something tougher than that. You will see this one also shall pass away. Amen? When you carry the mindset of failure, you can only continue to fail. Believe that one day you will celebrate. I told you I didn't have a job. I will carry my briefcase with uh, prayer points and CV. And I will go to where they are selling cars. I put down my briefcase and I was plus size then. So I was looking robust. They thought that maybe I passed somewhere and uh, they will give me something to drink. Oh God, what do you want? I will press this leather seat, PJ 505. Leather seat. Say 250,000. Ah, that's too much now. Ask me if I have 250 in my pocket. Amen. And I'll be going. I'll be feeling good. That one day, God is going to answer my prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are not a filial. Challenges of life will come. If, I, if you don't face challenge, you are not on the right road to success. If everything is easy for you, go to the mountain. Go and pray. Lord, show me the secret. What is, am I on the right path to my destiny? 
Because if you must fulfill destiny, you will cross waters. You will have to summon obstacles. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Number three. Reposition yourself from being conceited to seeking counsel. You are not an island. You don't have all the knowledge. Somebody who is conceited is having or showing an excessively high opinion of himself. You feel you know everything. You don't know. Even if you think you know everything, still ask questions. The Bible says, out of the multitude of cancers, there is victory. There is success. Seek counsel. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Proverbs eleven fourteen, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs 15, 22 says, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. You need people to guide you. You don't know it all. Praise the Lord. Ask those who have followed that path before. How did they make it? Read their stories. You are seeking counsel. Read books that can help you. You are seeking counsel. Don't just assume. Isaac made a very terrible assumption in the year of famine. He said he would go to Egypt because his father went to Egypt. I mean, he followed the example of his father, but he didn't ask. Thank God, the Lord appeared to him and said, don't go to Egypt. Stay at Jera. I will prosper you there, even in the year of famine. And then God revealed to him what he was supposed to be doing. While others were waiting for water, he was digging wells. And at the end of the day, the Bible says, in the year of famine, when everybody lost everything, he brought in hundredfold harvest. That is the purpose of cancer. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. You know, the promises of God are real. And God needs your cooperation. To fulfill them. Amen. Number four. Reposition yourself from talking. About experiences. To talking about expectations. We always talk about our experience. Am I right? Answer me now. You talk about your bitter experience. You talk about disappointments. You talk about your failure. I'm even tired. I prayed. I prayed. I prayed. Nothing seems to be happening. You are talking about your experience. But they want you to be talking about your earnest expectation. I will make it. Things will get better. I will overcome. No matter what the devil is doing, I will make it. I told you the story of one of my friends, now a pastor in New Jersey. We were at a prayer meeting. He said, Brother Joseph. I am not going to give up. There must be something the devil has seen ahead of me that I'm not seeing. That is why this battle is so severe. Praise the Lord. Always talk about your expectations. Don't be talking about it. If you continue to talk about your experience, you will continue to be embittered, frustrated, and you'll be going down. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Yes. Things may be tough. Maybe God is allowing you to pass through what you are going through for greater days. Look at Joseph. Amen. He was dwelling on the past. Even when he was interpreting the dream, he said, I didn't do anything. They stole me and they sold me to slavery. When it is good for you, remember me. He was talking about his experience. And that cost him extra two years in prison because the man he was talking to forgot about him and when the fullness of time came he brought joseph out of prison he became overseer over egypt he learned his lessons don't talk about your bitter experience do well more about your expectations for this year amen don't think about your losses god is going to bring back what you have lost it's a year of total recovery because you will recover, you'll be filled up to overflowing in the mighty name of Jesus. Talk more about your earnest expectation. Be bold about it, devil hates When you tell the devil that you are going to make it, he's afraid. 
When you are complaining, you are entertaining the devil. When you talk about your experiences, you are entertaining the devil. Okay, the years you have been dwelling on your past, how much progress have you made? It only wastes your time, your energy. It, 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 it affects your brain. It affects your brain. It makes you to think that there is nothing good in this world. Do you know some people feel there is nothing good in this world? But let me tell you, there are lots of good things in the world. Amen? A lot. God created this world for all to enjoy. Amen? Don't look at the world. Seeing the world as a terrible place. The world is good. And heaven is better. So enjoy the goodness here. Yeah. Whatever you think is what happens to you. Are you with me? Are you with me? So talk about your expectations. Don't operate your life based on people's opinion. It doesn't matter what they feel about you. That is their perception of you. Many people don't know you. They have already crucified you. Pastor Joseph, is it not the man who was a uh, that church before is now they now they are now in farmers brand. I know the church, Joseph. Amen. That doesn't change the plan of God for my life. It doesn't. Who are to pray for somebody? Say, Brother Joseph. We were in prayer warrior together. Prayer warrior. So, if you pray for that kind of a person, can anything come out of it? He's already sealed his mind. Out. I know Joseph very well. Now, ask him, what do you know about Joseph? We were in prayer world all together. Did you see your wife? No. People's opinion should not matter to you. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hold on to that. People will talk about you. They talk about Jesus. Am I correct? He, the Bible says he was going about doing good. But the people he was doing good to, they still talk about him. In fact, they plotted to kill him. So who are you? He said if this is happening to fresh uh, wood, how much more dry ones. So don't operate your life. Don't operate your life based on the news of the day. Go and listen to the news. You won't, you won't see breakthroughs. Will you see? No, somebody killed somebody. There was an explosion somewhere. There is one in Ukraine. You see Ukraine, Ukraine every day. They don't talk about where they're enjoying life, how they're making billions out of a computer and all that. You won't hear that on the news. So don't operate your life based on the news. Otherwise, you will just bury yourself without being dead. Are you with me? Number five. Reposition yourself from taking each day as they come. Set goals. Have plans for your future. Plan as if you will live forever. And live as if tomorrow is the end. Are you with me? Don't say, well, as each day is coming, if it is bad, we take it. If it is good, we no. You must have a plan for your future. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I'm building a plan. It's a very simple thing. But it requires serious thought and time. Amen. So if you are ready for a change, Prepare for a better future. In the next five years, where do you want to be? You need to think about it. Do you still want to be doing the same job? Earning the same salary? What will happen when you become a grandfather? Will you still have the energy to play with your grandchildren? You need to plan for all these things. Plan for your health. Plan for your future. Do you want to be using walking stick at the age of 61 or 65? Or you want to be able to jump the staircase? Plan for the future. 
the future is what you plan it to be. That is how it will come. You may not thinking that you may not be thinking that you are planning. Not planning is planning. Is that not true? If you are not planning, you are doing what? You are planning. They said if you are not planning for success already, automatically you are planning for failure. Plan your future. What do you want it to be? In the next five years, in the next ten years, what do you want your future to be? Set goals and still focus on your goals. What about your Bible study, your prayer life, your fellowship, coming to church? Do you still want to be coming to church quarter to twelve? Now that you are strong and healthy, that when you wake up, you can jump up from your bed? Or you want that you want to continue the same way? When you are 70 or 75, you need to plan for your future. I need to plan for my future. Amen? Praise the Lord. When I came to America, I said, when I am 50, I am leaving America. That was my plan. I came when I was 35. And so I said, at 50, I must be ready to go back to my village. I am 60, and I'm still here now. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Did I put anything in place to be able to retire at 50? That is the way it is. You have to prepare. You have to set goals. You have to stay focused. In every little area of your life, you must have a goal. Everything. What is your plan for your children? Okay, I said I will live at 50. What do you think will have become of my children and my wife? Because they are not yet ready to live. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And I know many of us, each time you are going to Nigeria, there is a question. Answer me. Men, are you hearing me? Is he a lie? What are you doing? <laughs> it takes a lot of rehearsal or now to even say, I'll be traveling this year. Praise the Lord. Yes, our country is messed up, but we pray for that country. Things will get better in the name of Jesus. So let us plan for our future. A glorious future. A happier future. Not the future that will say, I wish I had done this. It will not be a portion. In the name of Jesus. Reposition yourself from negative habits to habits that will bless your life. Change from this is me, I cannot change. Is a destructive statement. Amen. Praise the Lord. You need to check your heart. What am I doing that is destroying my future? Habits. Very, very important. Praise the Lord. I mean, how do you check your life? You check your life by checking your habits. Habits that are necessary for you to achieve your goals. Amen? Somebody says, said that uh, there is no rules without thorns. Meaning that in order to enjoy something that is beautiful and pleasurable, you must endure something that is difficult and painful. Now he says, are you happy that thorns bear roses or you are angry that roses have thorns? It's habit and perspective. It's how you look at things. Amen? Praise the Lord. Is it easy to fast? No. Is fast, fasting, is it healthy to your body? Very, very healthy. Many diseases will be cured by regular fasting. Amen? And I know the day you want to fast, that is when you wake up, it's like they scrape your stomach. But when you decide that, no, this is what I want to achieve, just endure the next 30 minutes, you'll be stronger. You will, it will surprise you. Because the body knows that you are not giving him that food, so he will go and rest. 
That is the truth. Just try it. You are craving for your regular coffee or chocolate in the morning. Just give it 30 minutes to one hour. Say, no, you are not. I'm not going to gas station today. I'm not going to. What is this? A popular coffee? Starbucks today. One hour. You will see that the thing has uh, cooled down. Say, well, it's not giving me to do. Say, let me not trouble anymore. Praise the Lord. Check your habits. And finally, reposition yourself from procrastination to being prompt in everything. Don't push anything. Say you will do it later. What you can do today, don't push it till tomorrow. Tomorrow you will not do it. Let me give you a simple example. If you miss your Bible reading for one day, Bible reading for how many days? One day. The following day, if you are not careful, you will do what? Is it not true? That is the truth. Every day, we have four chapters. Now you didn't read it today. Tomorrow, you now have eight chapters. What happened? Mm. God, we understand. Procrastination has destroyed many destinies. There is time for everything. That's what the Bible says. Time for you to plant and time to harvest. And the Bible says, he who does not plant when he's supposed to plant, he will be an onlooker when the harvest are coming. Either you are not a looker or a thief. Because you will now be looking for somebody else's harvest. Time for everything. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. Don't procrastinate over anything this year. Do things where you should do them. If you pray at 5.30, make sure by 5.30, nothing hinders you from that prayer. You read your Bible at 5 a.m. or whatever time you are reading the Bible, make sure. Your exercise, make sure. Do your exercise. Plan your meals. Eat healthy. It affects your destiny and your future. It is when you are alive that you can fulfill destiny. Is that not true? It is when you are alive that you can enjoy the fruits of your labors. Oh, I'm laboring over this student. Oh, no problem. When they graduate, I will be eating well. By the time they graduate, you are a vegetable. And unfortunately, America has nothing home. We don't have it in Nigeria. Amen? I mean, our children is not, it is the culture here. Unfortunately, that is the culture. You will labor and labor and labor and labor. Number one, the house you are living in, they don't like it. So, as soon as you, they will sell that house. Amen? Am I correct? Now, the mindset is that you live your own life. You cannot become a liability upon us. We will have to live our own life too. And once they put you in nursing home, they will come and do bad day, bad day for you. <laughs> they come and do bad day for you there. Oh, mommy, you look good in nursing home. <laughs> ah! Plan your life accordingly. Don't postpone anything. There is time for everything. Your life will be better this year. As you rise up. Amen. 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 Say, I will finish well. I will finish strong. This year, my head shall improve. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare, I will finish well. I will finish strong. This year, my head shall improve. Things are getting better. I will not die. I will live. I will fulfill destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
I will not be a victim of any accident in the name of Jesus. I will not be a victim of sudden disease or sudden sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be a victim of any calamity in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will preserve me. He will preserve my children. In the name of Jesus, the weapon of the enemy shall not prosper. He shall go back to the sender. In the mighty name of Jesus, I shall not be destroyed. I shall not face destruction. The glory of God shall be seen afresh upon me. In the name of Jesus, say, O oh Lord, my Father, let my children prosper in my lifetime. In the mighty name of Jesus, declare it, O oh Lord. Let my children, let them prosper in my lifetime. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, my Father, they shall not be become another person's children. In the name of Jesus, I am a father. I will live to the end, to the fullness of my time. In the name of Jesus, no power shall replace me before my time. In the name of Jesus, I am an eagle. I shall not be found in the valley. In the name of Jesus, I will fly higher. I will fly higher. I will fly higher. That hold do that I must cross to prosper. Oh God, arise, empower me to cross it this year. I will cross it. I will cross it. I will cross it. I will cross it. Overflowing blessings is my portion. Overflowing blessing is my portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, my Father, give me a new dimension of your blessings. In the name of Jesus, I will fly high. I will fly high. I will fly high. In the name of Jesus, where I am supposed to be lending to nations, I will not be a beggar. I will not be a beggar. I will not be a beggar. Again, I declare, I will finish well. I will finish well. This year is my year of overflowing blessings. I will not settle for less. Anything short of overflowing blessings, I reject it. I reject it. I reject it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Now say these confessions after me. Say thank you, God. For as I've cried to you, you have answered me. You have given me strength. You have revived me. Father, arise. Stretch out your hands against the rod of my enemies. Save me, O Lord, by your right hand. Though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, my life is hidden in you. The fiery death of sickness, disease, and death do not come near me because you have covered me with your feathers. The Lord is my tower of strength and my rock of defense. I have divine clearance to progress in life and I see God moving me forward. The Holy Spirit is guiding me and I shall not be stranded. I shall not be stranded. I shall not be stranded. God is upholding me with his right hand of righteousness and he will not abandon me. I am surrounded with favor as a shield and all good doors are opening before I knock them. I thank you God because it is my year of overflowing blessings. In Jesus name. Say oh Lord in this year of abundance I will not beg. I will not borrow. I will not suffer. I will not steal to survive. In the name of Jesus. Say in this year of abundance my cup of blessings shall run over. It shall run over. It shall run over. I will not suffer in the land of abundance. I will not suffer in the land of plenty. In the name of Jesus. Daily and timely help us shall locate me and help me to the end. In the name of Jesus. I decree in this year of overflowing blessings, I will not operate 
under closed heavens. In the name of Jesus, I will dwell in the land that overflows with milk and honey. Strangers shall serve me and my household. The covenant of abundance shall operate fully in my family. I will lend unto nations out of my abundance. In the name of Jesus, in this year of overflowing blessings, evil counsel against me shall fail. It shall fail. Evil counsels against my children shall fail, shall fail, shall fail. I shall not fall into any error that will put me in dry lands. In the name of Jesus, miracles of this is the hand of God will be my portion. In the name of Jesus, showers of blessings shall pour over my family on a daily basis. In the name of Jesus, in this year of overflowing blessings, my life will glorify God and I will be a blessing to my generation in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. So shall it be. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Now stretch forth your two hands. Everlasting Father, we thank you. We bless and exalt your holy name. For the grace and the strength that you have given us in these 21 days of our fasting and prayer program. We give you glory. We adore you in the mighty name of Jesus. We claim heaven's diplomatic immunity against any arrow, against any attack. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray each and every one of you. You will think creatively in a way that overflowing blessings will be a daily thing in your life, in my life, in the name of Jesus. That which must go for your life to shine, I command it to go now. I cause it out of your life now. In the name of Jesus, I break the yoke of perpetual failure. In the name of Jesus, I break the yoke of perpetual failure. In the name of Jesus, I break the yoke of perpetual failure. In the name of Jesus, because it's your year of overflowing blessings, you will not dwell in dry lands. You will not dwell in dry lands. You will not dwell in dry lands. I pray you will walk in at your time of blessings you will not go before you will not go late at the right time when god has ordained to bless you you will be there with the right people for the right purpose doing the right thing in the right company in the name of jesus i pray against tears of sorrow i cancel it now in the name of jesus Anything you put your hands upon that will not profit your destiny, I cancel it now. I cancel it now. In the name of Jesus, all your expectations that will advance your destiny and put a new dance to your feet, I pray they shall manifest. Manifest now. Manifest now. Manifest now. Because you are prayed today, beginning from this day, overflowing blessings in all areas of your life. That which you fear shall not come upon you. In the name of Jesus, every satanic prediction over your life be nullified. Be nullified. Be nullified. Again, what you fear shall not come upon you. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We are going to sing the closing hymn.